When you're in the grocery store shopping for flour, most of the white flour you see will say that it is bleached. But what does that actually mean? That's what we're going to talk about today. So I recently got an email asking if I could make a video about bleached flour and I thought this would be the perfect time to do it because I don't know about you, but for me, the holidays is a time where I'm doing a lot more baking than usual. So first we're gonna talk about what bleached flour actually is and then we're gonna go through the differences between bleached flour and unbleached and figure out what is gonna be the better option. To start off, the word bleached definitely has a negative connotation because for most of us, when we hear bleach, we think of liquid laundry bleach. So you kind of get this weird image of like some someone pouring laundry bleach onto your flour and then drying it out somehow or something. But that's not what's happening here. Here the word bleached is just referring to whitening. And you might be thinking, well flour is white, why do we need to whiten it even more? Well actually when you freshly mill flour, when it first happens, it actually has kind of a yellow color to it. And it's not great for baking just yet, it needs to age a little bit. And over time oxygen comes in and interacts with the flour, and the flour naturally naturally whitens from that exposure to the air. But this process of natural aging and whitening takes time. And so in the early 1900s, as we're starting to hit that period where things are becoming more industrial and things are being produced on a larger scale, that was a big thing for a flour operation. I mean, they had to store this flour after it was milled so it could have time to whiten. So this is where we see other processes come in to speed it up. And so instead of letting the flour whiten on its own naturally, they started bringing in different bleaching agents. And these could accomplish the same thing much more quickly, which means that they weren't having to store this flour, they could move it through a lot faster, and that also made the flour cheaper. Now different bleaching agents have been used over time, but currently in the US, from what I found, the two most common that are used are benzoyl peroxide and chlorine gas. So you might be thinking if unbleached flour is really just being bleached naturally over time by being exposed to the air around it, then are there any real differences between bleached and unbleached? Unbleached. Well, the first thing is that the bleached flour is still going to be whiter than the unbleached. So depending on what kind of look you want for your cake or your cookie or whatever you're making, that might matter to you. Bleached flour is also softer than unbleached flour. So this could affect the texture of your baked goods. Now, I haven't personally done like a side-by-side -side comparison test, but some people online have some more serious bakers than I am, and there are mixed results. Some people say that Yes, they can totally tell a difference when they use the bleached flour and they prefer it. Things have a better texture, they rise better, all this kind of stuff, and they will only use bleached flour. Others say that they really can't tell a difference or maybe they even prefer the results with the unbleached flour for certain things. Uh, so it's really a mixed bag and it kind of just depends on you and your personal preference. Another thing is flavor. Some people say that they don't notice a difference at all, but others say that they really do prefer the flavor of the unbleached flour. Now for me personally, as someone who doesn't bake a lot and who just thinks that sugar and butter are always gonna be delicious together no matter what kind of flour you're using, I don't think that this really matters too much, uh, but that's just me. Maybe if you are a really serious baker and you do notice those differences, then it might matter more to you. Now with this whole thing, another question that comes up is does the bleaching process somehow make the bleached flour unhealthy or super duper dangerous? Now there's no real evidence for that, but there are still people out there who have concerns about it. Um, so it's going to depend on how you feel. And remember that the unbleached, it could change the texture, but probably not a huge amount depending on how picky you are about your baked goods. And it could taste better. So that's something to think about. And I mean, either way, whether you go bleached or unbleached, they're both still white flour. And we know that white flour isn't super nutritious. It's not some sort of magical health food. Um, and cakes and cookies are things that we can include in the diet, but that should be a smaller portion of our diet. They shouldn't be making up the bulk of what we're eating. So no matter which one you choose, you shouldn't be eating a whole lot of it anyways in comparison to all the other foods that you're eating. Now, as far as what I do personally, I don't buy either of them. And that's because I exclusively use whole wheat flour in my baking. And whole wheat flour is good because it has a little more fiber, it has a little more nutrients, and it's just the thing that I always have around. So whether I'm doing a pizza crust or a loaf of bread, you know, for that I'll use whole wheat flour. If I'm doing cookies or cakes or biscuits, then I'll usually use whole wheat pastry flour. Um, and that works out for me. And since I'm not someone who's baking all the time, it just really doesn't make sense for me to go out and get a bag of bleached or unbleached white flour that I might use like a couple times a year and the rest of the time it's just kind of gonna be sitting there 
there and taking up space and I just don't want to deal with that and since I'm not someone who's like obsessed with the perfect cookie um, it doesn't really matter to me texture wise using the whole wheat pastry flour or it works fine it still tastes good I still enjoy it and to me it doesn't really make a difference but let me know in the comments what is the go-to flour that you use in your baking do you really notice a difference between different types of flours and has the information in this video maybe led you to think about this a little more and maybe choose something different and if you are new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and healthy recipes then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I want to show you how to do it and if you're loving the free info here but you're finding that you need something more personalized don't forget that I do offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching and counseling so if you're interested in working with me then just let me know and we can get that set up for you thanks for watching I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time